So today I will be having a conversation with a friend of mine. Her name is Stephanie. We met when we were both working at a print media company, and I was in the marketing department, and she was a journalist. At one point, we were both actually working near Universal Studios, so we were both in Universal City, and we probably only met up once. She was working as an entertainment reporter, and I thought she would have a lot of interesting experiences she could share with us. And I thought we could probably learn something new from her. I am actually pretty intimidated to do this interview because who am I to interview a reporter, right? I think she left her previous job to pursue something for herself, so I'm excited to hear about that too. So I hope we'll have some insightful takeaways from these conversations, and hopefully that will help all of us a little bit. Testing, testing. Hello. Does it work? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you for talking to me. Of um, course. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I've never been that. This is very unusual and new for me to be on this end of the table. So I'm very excited. Well, I'm very intimidated. So hopefully, I'll oh. learn, get some tips and tricks from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I think it'll be helpful so for. Happen. It'll be helpful for other people too. I think. Um, yeah, so. But yeah, so this is like one of the projects that I work on because I'm not very good at speaking in front of the camera, and then you know, practice is always good. So this is what I've been trying to work on. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. I don't know what your plan is for the future, but at least in the past, what really inspired you to become a reporter or journalist, and is that? Did you always know that's what you wanted to do? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Nothing in my life right now. I had planned like one percent, like not even a percent of my life right now. I had any vision or plans for because my plan probably went this way, and I'm here, like very far away from 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 what I had planned for. I was a science major, <laughs> all throughout oh, college. Science yeah. major. Mm -hmm. I, I, I uh, majored in psychobiology back in college. Yeah. So I was not, and when I, I, when I, w I was um, still in high school in Taiwan, Chinese was not <laughs> my strongest subject at all. So it was kind of a surprise when I, um, when my friends and family knew that, oh, you, you are a reporter. Like, they didn't even necessarily think that I want to be because I didn't even know. Right when I graduated, I didn't necessarily know what I want to do. I just know one thing that I didn't want to do more research or lab work because I just had enough experience to know that's not what I want. So if anything, out of college is for me is I finally figured out what it is that, that I want to stay away from. But I still like the the science, the new research, and the the new innovations in in medicine. So um, my first job right off college, they were looking for a Chinese writer who has um, a background in science who can help them build up this, their medical column, and they hired me for it. And that's oh, wow. when I realized, wow, I actually am I'm good at this. Like I know how to write. Just I by after reading three months straight of newspaper from to back, like completely word to word, it just something clicked and things just uh, start coming really quickly. And at the time, my supervisors and my my bosses are very um, they really they trusted me with a lot of things like. How do you let someone who has no journalist experience run a, a weekly column? But they let me get, they let me do that, and I ran that for a good amount of years until I realized that I actually need to get. I wanted to have a degree in this field to make myself more um, legitimate. That was my reason to apply for grad school, and mm -hmm. with the help of my supervisor's recommendation and everything, um, I got in. Uh, US, the USC program, which is really amazing, but it's really harsh. We, I personally, it's probably exaggeration, but I probably 
slept on average four hours every day when I was in that program because oh, they man. it was a two year program but they crammed it into one year and a summer. So it was a lot of work and, and I was really grateful because I had some experience reporting in Los Angeles already. So a lot of things it can easy for me, but there are and then I also realize there are a lot of other things that are super difficult for me, like writing in English, which is my second language. It's so it's still to this day the hardest thing for me. Um, but I just love it and I got to really meet people from pretty much all walks of life. Like I've met someone in that in that field. So I think this job is really eye opening for me, and I learned a lot and heard so many people's story, and a lot of them are very inspiring. So I felt very fortunate as well. That's why I keep going back. I really like to talk about like this. I really like to talk with people about their stories, their experience, and the. The, the way they overcome their struggles. I think that's really what I really like to report is just unfortunately when you're reporting um, uh, daily, for daily news, you also have a lot of other um, not so positive things happening right. in your community. You have to, you have to um, report that. So that was kind of um, one of the things that make me realize I kind of need a break from mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know it's when you're young you, your emotions is all over the place yourself and yeah when you have such close contact with so many different people that you're just at one point I feel like I was pulled all over the place and it was mm -hmm. ooh, overwhelmed so kind of off topic yes. but I also went to USC for grad school right I'm curious we're not in the same program but I heard about your program. I know it's like one of the most famous programs at USC. What was the most valuable thing that you gained from the experience? Because, I mean, it's a very expensive program. And what do you think was your biggest takeaway or what you found to be the most helpful, most valuable, and for, I guess, people that are considering the same thing? Because I kind of use my grad school program as a segue to into what I kind of want to do like you it's kind of like to give myself more credential and feel more not expert but more knowledgeable in the area so kind of the same reason why I went to grad school but sometimes it's like I always wonder like was that really worth it right and I mean there's a lot of people in the field that don't have a master's degree so I'm curious about like what you found to be the most valuable from uh, that year and a half? I think um, there are a couple of different levels, but when I went to USC, USC is the place where I trained to be on camera. That's where um, I started to, to, to report on camera. Before I was print only and I take pictures for my stories and that's about it. And to me, that's valuable very practically because right after um, I finished the program. Um, it was I it, pretty early on. I know video was the, the the my emphasis. That's something that I really want to focus on because of everything else. Um, among everything else, I feel like video is where my company was the direction where my company was going. So that's what I picked, and it turned out it was very practical for me personally as well, not just professionally because. Um, I could do a lot of different projects on myself with others, like with you and with other friends. And it's just very valuable. I think it's practical. But then again, do you need to pay thousands of dollars to learn how to edit a video? Not necessarily, <laughs> but it's not really just what the program offers. It's also, it's connection. You, you connect with um, your peers in the industry and also, also um, people before you, all the veteran, our professors are all veteran um, reporters, journalists um, from major outlets. And they, their worldview is very different from what you get when you just get your news from, from TV and from reading. It's very different. I think that's, I think people nowadays pay more for, for, for connection than the than, than actual material stuff because you can't pretty much find everything on the internet. But it's the connection that we, we, we 
nowadays pay huge money for. So that's really what the tuition goes for. After USC, in your previous job, it was with M. Is it called M Times? Yeah, it's actually, it's M Time. It's a Chinese entertainment uh, media, mm-hmm. and I worked for the LA office. Here in mm. Hollywood. Before you, it was more of a tra- traditional media, and mm-hmm. after that, it was specifically entertainment. How did you choose that route? Well,、uh, I was referred by a friend who is also a journalist in LA, and she was leaving that position that she referred me to, and so I had her recommendation, and my boss was really looking for.、Um, I think what she told me is that my friend and I share a very similar energy that she likes for、uh, entertainment reporting, and also she needs someone who can speak Chinese.、Mm-hmm. So pretty much throughout my career, Chinese speaking and writing is my thing. Like that's the thing that people recognize me from mostly,、mm-hmm. and that's how I got this job. And to be honest, it was a tough transition because I didn't ha- necessarily know that much about. Culture, American pop culture, because I didn't grow up here, and a lot of things that、um, come that comes very naturally for、um, people who grow up in in states is a whole new database that I have to build, and that at first it was really intimidating. And but my two other reporter co- colleagues at the、um, at the company, they are also again veteran、uh, veteran. Entertainment reporters is both in、uh, in reporting in Hollywood for over decade, over a decade. So they taught me a lot, and they really train me like their pe- little padawan. I really just walk around with them and just look, observe. Again, just re- pretty much the same three months reading newspaper nonstop. Is that this time I just follow them to、uh, interviews whoever、uh, whenever the media、uh, meet. The movie company,、uh, sorry, the studio let me go in with them. I would just go and watch and observe, and gradually they let me. They let me start off with some、uh, shows where I just talk to the camera directly, or I interview someone up to the side. But I don't really do what my two other colleagues do, which is they actually do the movie junkets and they do interviews one on one with the talents and or the directors and other filmmakers. And but towards the、uh, the it took me about a year to finally get used to、um, be this happy chirpy type of、um, person on on camera because <laughs> before I was I was in heart news like I'm not supposed to be happy of talking with my hands like this this is not allowed. Pro tip: When you're doing interviews, don't do this. Noted. I'll put that down. <laughs> no, no hand gestures. Yeah. So it took me some time to get used to being on camera again for、um, entertainment reporting purposes. Every job, I learned a lot, and I just kind of pick up skills here, here and there, and just trying my best at the job and do the things that. They asked me to. It was pretty difficult because they really <laughs> throw me into really crazy events just right off the top. And sometimes I was like, "Wait, am I supposed to really be here?" A lot of time, I I really a lot of time I have this imposter syndrome. Like, am I really qualified to be here? But then、right. gradually, just like you know what, someone hired me. Someone's paying me to be here, so there must be <laughs> there must be a reason. That's good、right. enough for me. Focus on my job. Besides the language barrier, what would you say is the most challenging part about being in that role? Throughout my entire time as a journalist,、um, the hardest part, and I'm sure a lot of women working、uh, now in every industry has been through some kind of harassment. So that was always the hardest.、Thing. Luckily, personally, I don't think I have experienced. Anything bad in my career-wise in terms of harassment, but I'm sure there's a lot of people experiencing the same thing and probably don't feel comfortable sharing, and they probably want、yeah. to hear or feel relatable to other people. 
it's just I'll just very briefly touch on it and just the hardest part I think for every woman working in this day and age is harassment of any sort be it sexual or racial or your age or body figure like that's really the hardest thing for me and I will say those TV shows or movies that that um, perpetuate this idea that female journalists sleep with our informants to get ahead is just insult on women, insult on this profession, and insult on everyone's intelligence. Because I'm I'm not saying that no, there's no one ever, no one's ever done that. I, I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying that it's a stereotype. It's not everybody but it's bad enough that people have sexualized asian women it's not helping adding on another journalist female right. journalist that sleep with the people they're interviewing so that that's that part is hard but other thing is money you don't really make a lot <laughs> as a reporter it's it's tough so you kind of do it because you love it <laughs> or you have I to do it because you love it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think, I think a lot of journalists and reporters not right. Even right now feels this way. Like, okay, the plan is really horrible, but what can you do? One, you, um, other jobs you probably won't really enjoy as much as being a reporter. And the other is you get what? you just love doing this so we money money is always the hardest yeah. thing that's so interesting we don't have to continue this topic but when you brought up the like how media portrays like reporters that reminds me like i because i started rewatching marvel movies recently and then i think it was i just watched iron man 2 and then it has exactly the example that you talked about or was it iron man 1 i think the girl was in both movies <laughs> But it was that female reporter that slept with Iron Man. The one example that really stuck in my head is uh, House of Cards. Season one, they literally had this character, female journalist, sleeping with a congressman to get information for her story. And I'm just like, I've, again, I've never been to, to DC. I've never reported there, so I don't know what it is. Like, I'm just speaking from my experience. Sorry. As, yeah. as far as I know, all the female reporters that I've ever met and be friends with, none of them do that. We just, we don't need to. Honestly, right. people are actually really, people are actually really willing to, to, to speak with you when, once you show them that you actually care about their story. And I think female reporters tend to have this natural instinct to kind of help bring people in and open up to share. I mm. think that if anything, if there's anything biological about this is probably that part. But mm. otherwise I really yeah, that's a stereotype on that. Good. That's very interesting. Put a pin on that. We'll go back to that <laughs> in the future. I mean from my research and what I heard about like what you did before, it looks like you get to go to a lot of these cool events and I know it's just I heard about some challenges you had before too, but I guess like what would be your highlight of your experience as an entertainment reporter? Is there like any specific event that you will probably never forget or anyone that you interviewed that really opened your eyes? I think you interviewed someone that I was really jealous about. It might just be Red Bob Man? Iger. <laughs> no, I actually think it's Bob Iger. <laughs> I saw him multiple times at movie premieres multiple times with our dean too so jealous <laughs> i think there's like i said there's i've been i've been to a lot of very important events in hollywood and all of them are very cool and it takes you really see how it takes um a village to to bring an event and it's really crazy and for me personally i think I got to travel to movie sets to talk to talent when they are shooting, when they're still shooting the movie and we get to tour the set and we get to write about it and then ask 
um, the production designers, the, the artists that put everything together. We get to talk, talk to them about their design, their vision, their inspiration, and where with the process that they built this thing that might really just be a split of a second in a movie, but every detail that is there, if it's missing, our eyes catches it. But if it's there, we take it for granted. And it's, that's really amazing to me how much work it takes to build one thing. And the one set that I'm the most uh, impressed with is the set for Shazam. The DC oh, comic. I have, that's the movie that I cover from, that's the first movie that I covered from um, when there's a shooting set visit, that's what we call set visit, oh, to all the way to premiere. So there's several uh, marketing events in between, but I pretty much covered every single one of them for the movie. And it was really funny because Zachary Levi is the, the, he's the nicest people I've ever met. Even th that day when we went to Toronto for the set visit, he had a packed schedule and we were all like there were like 10 12 reporter uh reporters waiting for him just sitting on the side of the, a movie set waiting for him but he had a really packed schedule so we wake up very very uh end of the day and uh when we finally got to talk to him he invited all of us to his trailer and he still had his shazam hair on he, he put uh switched out his uh, costume but Still, the hair is still on, and he sat down with us for a solid 40 minutes of interview. It never happened. It doesn't really happen that often. Usually, be, be, when we were speaking to actors in between takes, it's about like 10, 15 minutes top. That day, he sat down with us and talked to each and every one of us. He asked us our names, where we're from, and the whole spiel. And it's really crazy how nice this person is. And then, because I cover all the events after, they're after until the premiere, I think it was um, when I went to New York for the junket, I went in and was like, I remember you. He remember Aww. my face. He doesn't necessarily remember my name, of course, because right. he, he talked to um, at least 30 to 60 reporters a day when they're on press events. So, but the fact that he remembers my face, he remembers that he has met me before. And it's just, he's the sweet, sweetest guy ever. So I'm King Shazam forever. <laughs> That's, That's great. Cool. Well, I, I heard that, I actually didn't watch the movie, but I heard Shazam is actually a really good movie. Um, yeah, so I guess that's good for yeah. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Two thumbs um, up for Zach. It's very relatable to hear about you feeling uncomfortable or the imposter syndrome of being in front of the camera and with like a room full of probably very experienced people besides just having more experience do you have any tips and tricks that you use to at least fake it until you make it or yeah do you have any tricks that help you got through that really tough time in the beginning honestly fake it till you make it was my mantra for the longest time. I'm not naturally comfortable being on camera, so that's really tough for me. And I'm not, it doesn't come very easy for me to just go up to a complete stranger and start talking to them, let alone asking them really pointy, sensitive questions and demanding almost an answer within two, three sentences. And it's really tough. And I didn't really notice how difficult it is for them when I was mm -hmm. doing my job, doing my thing. So that was, so for the longest time, I just fake it till you make it. And it's not, wait, when I say fake it, it's not really just like, okay, pretending that you're someone you're not. You're, you have to be mindful and remember what parts that you feel you have more room to grow. The way you make it, at least for my experience, is you ask for help. I think nowadays people are really, actually really willing to help if you ask. And if you come at to them with a very sincere attitude and tell them that I've done this and this and I'm stuck here and I've seen your experience, kind of pick your brain on this and how can I? People are actually really generous. And that's really one of the things that I was really surprised about as a reporter. Right. People are really, really generous in general. Right. That is yeah. surprising. I would assume 
like that industry is like very cutthroat and then people you are, are point- definitely pointed <laughs> I mean yeah I mean that's part of the job that's, we are not there to make friends we are not getting paid very little to, to be there to make friends that, that's not what we do yeah just keep doing it keep keep going at it you're doing something that really energizes you like really gives you the like lit light up something inside of you then do it i think that's what we are here to do like in, on this earth we need to figure out what it is that gives us that drive from the core up and and go for it and i think it doesn't necessarily have to be one thing in your lifetime i think if anything nowadays with information that's readily available in our phones and everything happening so fast there's so many things happening and yeah just keep keep at it and you'll you'll get it take it till you make it so i know well i actually didn't know but now that you left that role um what are your plans in the future what do you want to work on and what is pushing you forward what's in your core <laughs> and now right now is yoga yoga has always been in my life throughout the whole time when I mentioned earlier, the, the emotional pull when you are in that job was really overwhelming so we were 20 something year old. So I accidentally found yoga very casually and I just always know that this is something I really want to do, but I never really had the time to. And because of COVID, I have a lot of time now. And I got to really build it up to a habit and it's been really great and I am finishing up my 20 uh, 200 hour teacher training Woo! this weekend <laughs> I'm wow because I love my classmates I love my teachers when you're ready you're already, already late so mm. they're like eight weeks is enough you have known enough about yoga please go <laughs> I just really love how much more about yoga that I've learned and yeah there's just so much about yoga that I don't know that's something I'm working on and I'm just seeing where I can start teaching and sharing yoga with people who want to start I'm so excited so, for you thank you I'm super stoked about like every morning I don't I don't need an alarm anymore I just wake up and yoga time that's my coffee now so does that mean after this weekend you can officially teach your own yoga classes well yes and no supposedly I'm supposed to finish all the assignments but um, I need to record myself teaching and it's not a very easy thing for me right now to find someone to teach and, mm. and be on camera so I'm still sorting that out that's some technical issues to uh, uh, submit the assignments. Otherwise, yeah, once I finish them and I get uh, all of them get approved, I can get certified. I can register um, to be on the the the, uh, the list on Yoga Alliance, and that'll be fun. I'm so excited! Can I sign up, please? <laughs> absolutely, yes, absolutely, yeah. I, I'm thinking about starting also like your uh, uh, YouTube channel, and but. You know, there's so much yoga content on the internet right now. And no, honestly, you should, you have to do it. I, I, I mean, I will, I'm just going to be more strategic about my content and everything. I don't know about like Asian, like teaching in Chinese, I guess. I've never even, I never looked into it. I, I don't even know if that's something you will want to do, but at least like even regular yoga class. I don't know, maybe because YouTube only pushes certain, like, some people up on the feed, but I feel like there's for sure room for people that are different. For sure, like, I feel like there are girls like you that I feel more relatable to. I would totally watch. You should totally yeah, do it. And I then, will, I, will. I mean, me and Andrew were, were both like looking and or studying, researching content creation stuff. So mm-hmm. if you have any questions, you can ask us. Like, if you like, oh, yes. you research like all the equipment and he buys all the mics and camera and live stream stuff that we look into. So we can help you out if you have questions. <laughs> like, I thought about doing yoga training too, but mm-hmm. well, no action there right now. <laughs> 
so yeah hearing about your experience maybe it'll push me to do it too yeah it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun like you build up you physically build up your confidence that's Mm. that's the first enlightenment I guess through yoga and I think that's really important for us for all of us right you know that you have the confidence in yourself I really want to use it to build to help people or not necessarily help like kind of meet people like you and me like like-minded people who wants to make yoga a habit a, a healthy habit and I want to hopefully create a community that we can all share our experiences because yoga is so much more than just being on that it's really what you bring to the mat in your it's your life your story and you kind of meditate and let everything marinate in you i love it sorry i just want to thank you sorry. for answering all my thank questions you. thank you and for i actually me. i really look forward to any opportunity that we can work together in the future and yeah, i'm excited for your future project <laughs>